So we're gonna start this video with goniometry for shoulder extension, and then we will do MMT for shoulder extension. So shoulder extension happens in the sagittal plane. The end feel is firm. And according to the textbook, the normal value is zero to 60. We'll see how many people actually have 60 degrees, but that's, that's our normal value that's been established. So patient position is prone. She's facing away from the test side and her palm is facing her body for goniometry. And it's, it is difficult for people to bring their arm up into a shoulder extension and to hold it there for a long time. So we do our best to try to like get in and get out. You know what I mean? Um, with shoulder flexion, we talked to the stationary arm is lateral, is parallel with the lateral midline of the thorax. Same thing with shoulder extension. But the difference is in supine, when we're measuring flexion, that thorax can arch away from the bed. So we have to adjust for that. And pretty much when they're prone and we're measuring extension, that typically doesn't happen. So the station arm is most often just parallel with the bed. So that's, that's nice. We're going axis of motion for the fulcrum and we're going lateral epicondyle for the moving arm. So when you're ready, I'm gonna have you, and the, the biggest compensation that we see is, it's not even a, maybe a compensation difficulty, is instead of extending purely in the sagittal plane, people wanna come way out to the side. So I'm gonna have you keep this elbow straight and bring your hand all the way up to the ceiling as far as you can. So there's her axis of motion, leaving, um, let's turn this around. This parallel with the bed, that goes right to lateral epicondyle. Good, come on back down. <laughs> I know that's difficult. So it's zero to 48 degrees for extension. Okay, and then for MMT, the position changes. So instead of her facing away, she faces towards, so turn and face me. And instead of the palm facing the body, the palm faces the ceiling. All right, so I'm gonna have you bring this hand, Keep everything straight and bring it away from the bed again as high as you can. I'm gonna to try to push you back down. You're not gonna let me do it. Resistance is proximal to the elbow. Stabilization, if the head of her humerus comes off of the bed, I'm gonna cup under there for my stabilization. Don't let me push down. Stay strong, stay strong, good. Some people, the head of their humerus will stay on the bed when they extend. So you can either let the bed stabilize but still I want you to put your hand here because I want you to get into the habit of always using two hands for MMT. Um, or you could still slip your hand under there and provide additional stabilization with your hand if you wanted to. Just be careful when you're coming under, um, you wanna make sure that you're just on the anterior humerus and that your, your hands aren't grabbing accidentally soft tissue. You really do need to be cognizant of where your hands are. The tricky thing about this is that we measure shoulder extension in an against gravity position, right? So whatever number I happen to get with my goniometer, I know that she can, um, she can do that against gravity for her, for her grade three, which means when is someone ever gonna earn less than a grade three? You know what I mean? If they can, if she can move through zero to 48 against gravity for the goniometer, I know she can do the same thing for MMT. But let's say you're in a situation where um, you do need to palpate, you should at least know what you're palpating. You're gonna palpate posterior shoulder and also just like inferior to the inferior angle and right along here because we're gonna try to catch lats and like posterior deltoid if we're trying to differentiate between a one and a zero. And that's it.